Hello everyone, my name is Michael and welcome to K-pop Music Appreciation. I think it's pretty obvious that K-pop has gained a strong following around the whole world and even I admit to have become very fond of it. So this is a chill series I want to kick off where I just relax and geek about songs I love and try to discuss a bit about the music theory behind them. A few things before we start, I'm no professional at all when it comes to music, I'm just a bedroom guitarist. However, I have been playing guitar for about 12 years and I believe that experience has taught me a thing or two. That being said, I don't guarantee that everything I say in these videos will be 100% correct. However, concepts in music theory are so vast that they can be understood through multiple interpretations. So whatever I say in these videos will be just how I understand what I hear. I'm also not going to attempt breaking down every single layer into a composition. I'm just going to focus on what I find interesting. If ever I get something wrong, I'd appreciate if you would correct me through a comment as I'm also treating this as a learning opportunity. So that's all for the intro. Let's get into the music. This is one for the blinks. So why am I starting with As If It's Your Last by Blackpink? Fun fact. This is actually the song that got me into K-pop. It just took me one listen and I was hooked. So I really owe it all to the song. Today I want to discuss how the song utilizes scales and modes to emphasize emotion in the story being sung in the lyrics. Let's start off with some basics. So a scale is basically a sequence of notes used to build melodies. If you've had any basic lecture on music, or if you've watched The Sound of Music, you'd probably be most familiar with the C major scale. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti. It's named the C major scale because the root note, or the first note, is a C note. And it contains a major third. One, two, three. A major six. Four, five, six and a major seventh. Seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's our C major scale. And all those notes together give it its characteristic happy feeling. If we were to flatten these specific notes by a half step, they would turn into minor notes, thus forming the sad sounding C minor scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's our C minor scale. The major and the minor scales are the fundamentals in composing majority of music, and several different scales can be derived from these two scales by altering the notes within them. A mode, on the other hand, is a type of scale which possesses a distinct melodic characteristic by having specific intervals between their notes. Two of the seven modes have already been introduced in this video, as the happy sounding major scale is also known as the Ionian mode, and the sad sounding minor scale is also known as the Aeolian mode. Your last starts off with what appears to be a bass melody in the key of F minor. However, that filters in to become a high pitch sliding melody. Once the vocals come in, the bass is revealed to be just a constant thumping F note. With these two notes alone, we expect the melody to be in F minor, since there is a minor third and a minor seventh present in the melody. What's cool is that when we hear the vocal melody, we don't hear something minor at all, but we actually hear something preppy and somewhat edgy. This is the melodic characteristic of the Mixolydian mode. The Mixolydian mode is basically a modified major scale with a minor seventh. So F Mixolydian would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This mode is commonly used in blues and rock music due to its psychedelic feeling. <laughs> The use of a major third allows us to give off a happy feeling while having an unpredictable edgy minor seventh in the mix. 
I find it interesting how the composers were able to put in a major third in the vocal melody while having a minor third exist in the instrumental. I believe this is possible because that minor third in the melody rarely shows up and only appears at the end of the second measure, I believe, with the rest of the notes being neither major nor minor. I believe the indecisiveness of the Mixolydian mode pairs well with the frustration of being in love sung in the lyrics. Next comes the pre-chorus, which serves as a transition to prepare us for the climax that is the chorus. The pre-chorus is actually the first time that chords are introduced into the song, giving us our very first chord pattern. We have F minor, G sharp, D sharp, C sharp, going back to D sharp. Brilliantly hidden in this pre-chorus is a change in key going from F mixolydian, a predominantly major scale, to F Aeolian or the F minor scale. This smooth modulation is possible since the two scales differ only in the third and the sixth note, having the minor seventh and all the other notes in common. The melody of the pre chorus leans towards more traditional pop as there's no conflict between the notes within the chords. I believe the use of the Aeolian mode or the minor scale emphasizes the distress of longing for someone to the point of pleading for relief. Finally, all that buildup leads us to this explosive chorus, which at the time I first heard it was probably the catchiest and the most satisfying choruses I've ever heard in my whole life. The chorus introduces a new chord pattern, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, F minor, going down to D sharp. This chord pattern brings us into the key of G sharp major or G sharp Ionian. This isn't much of a modulation from F minor though, since F minor is the relative minor of G sharp major. Relative minor meaning that even though one is a major and one is a minor, they technically have the exact same notes in their scales. The chorus is split into two halves, the first half being sung by Jenny and Rosé, and the second half being sung by Lisa. What I love about the first half of the chorus is how the vocal melody flows and resolves so smoothly with the chord changes. So the vocal melody starts off like this. So what's going on there? That's basically just the 8th and the 7th of the G-sharp major scale going back and forth. So that sounds alright alone. However, we're playing it over the C-sharp, which is the first chord of the chorus. When you put that melody over the C-sharp, it brings a little tension because of that 7th. The 7th of the G-sharp actually acts as a sharp 4 to the C-sharp, which isn't a natural note in the C-sharp major scale, thus causing this tension between the C-sharp and that 7th. See, it's a little off. However, once the chord changes to G-sharp, they were solved it brilliantly by using 6 to 5 of the G sharp major scale. That works because we're finding a way to transition to the fifth of that chord. A thing about music intervals is that the fifth and the root will always exist in harmony. <laughs> Those are the two notes that have completely no tension between them. That's why they're the basis of most power chords. Those are all roots with their fifths. That's why after having such a tense relationship between the root and that sharp four, once we move to a root with its fifth, it resolves so smoothly. Once we move up to the next chord, our D sharp, the chord sort of rises, and with the chord rising, so does the vocal melody. So along with 
the chord, the vocal melody has also risen towards the D sharp. Once we go to the F minor, which is pretty much the climax of this chord pattern, the vocal melody will also rise up with it. And we'll descend with it going back to the D sharp. Returning back to the C sharp. The second half of the chorus sung by Lisa on surface level appears to be less melodic than the first half since she's technically singing just two notes for the most of it. Even though the second half appears less melodic, having less notes, I find it just as pleasing to listen to. And why is that so? If we look at the two notes being sung by Lisa, they're the major third and the root of the G-sharp major scale. So that sounds completely normal in the G-sharp major scale. However, we're playing that over the first chord, which is a C-sharp. When played over the C-sharp, that major third acts as a major seventh to that C-sharp, giving us this sound. Did you hear how smooth that sounded? That is the distinctive sound of a major seventh chord. Major seven chords are commonly used in jazz and R&B. They're that. It's, it's that kind of sound. Basically, seven majors are smooth. So even though Lisa is just singing those two notes in such a edgy rapper way, the vocal melody, when paired with the chords, forms such a pleasing sound and is brilliant. <laughs> those two notes stay the same for majority of this part. It only changes at the last chord, F minor. However, that kind of acts as just a response to the motive that has been established. I believe that the use of the G sharp major or the G sharp Ionian is just perfect for expressing the acceptance of being in love and all of the joyful things of that feeling. As you can see, this chorus is really explosive happy and it just feels good, you know? Baby, Once the chorus ends, there's a drum break which serves as a transition back to the verse and the verse is a rap this time. I don't know much about rapping so I can't comment on that. However, the rest of the musical elements are pretty much the same as what I've discussed already and it continues to the rest of the song. The bridge is basically just a pre-chorus with a different vocal melody and the song ends with the chorus. So that, my friends, was just me appreciating and talking about Blackpink's as if it's your last. If you learned something or if you enjoyed me blabbering all about this stuff, leave a like. If you want to see more and be updated with my content, please subscribe. If you want me to analyze or look into another song that I might like, write it down in the comments. That's all I have for you. Thank you and good night.